Lately, I have been struggling to slow down, but what does it really mean to live slowly? A few days ago, I came across a sentence that went something like this. I took time off to slow down and it turned out that slow living is nothing more than a life without constant overstimulation. That set my perspective. Life should be simple, without endless to-do lists. It's about living in the moment rather than in the past or worrying about the future. It's about being intentional with your time and energy. And most importantly, doing more of what you love. Our little garden has brought me countless moments of joy. It's a place where my mind stops rushing and I can reconnect with myself. It's well known that nature is the best medicine for stress and anxiety. It really makes you slow down and appreciate the beauty of the moment. August is my favorite summer month and, spiritually, the eighth month symbolizes new beginnings. It's the time when the fruits of your labor start to manifest and you finally see the results of your hard work. But perhaps it's also time to relax and enjoy the sweetness of the moment. This year I want to take summer with me and I have been discovering ways how to preserve the colors, smells, tastes and warmth of the season. With this episode I invite you on a little journey of exploring the beauty of nature, allowing you to spark your creativity and fuel your imagination. My hope is that this small pose will not only offer you a brief escape from the hustle of everyday life, but also inspire you to embrace the art of slowing down. It's getting quite stormy here, so my plan for today is to harvest as many flowers and herbs from my garden as possible. I have been growing different varieties of flowers that are perfect for drying and planning to use them in my upcoming craft projects or home decor. Nature has definitely sparked my creativity and, like nature itself, creative activity has a calming effect and makes us to slow down. So here I am, approaching my late 30s and rediscovering my creativity. To be honest, the start is rough, but I believe that we all are creative. All I need is time and practice to fully get my creative juices flowing. <laughs> Let's see and wait. Meanwhile, I will just enjoy the process regardless of the outcome. By the way, let me know in the comments how you get creative. It's amazing how much you can grow in a tiny garden. You really don't need much space to grow your own herbs. One of the heroes of my garden is small but mighty chamomile. I have been exploring the world of plants and their benefits and I'm very excited to use them on my well-being journey.
had to come inside to film because neighbor's kids are playing outside which is absolutely lovely and amazing but sometimes it's just uh, a little bit difficult to uh, film when uh, different things are going uh, around you. Anyhow I just wanted to say that I left some of the peppermint stems growing because I want to enjoy uh, tea made of fresh peppermint leaves during the next months and I saw that um, there is still like a young little stems uh, rising so uh, peppermint is a survival and it constantly like reproduces itself so and that's why I'm growing it in a pot because Otherwise, everything would be <laughs> covered uh, with peppermint. It really easily takes over all the other plants as well. Anyhow, it's um, there's a small um, peppermint uh, stems uh, like uh, rising. So I thought that probably quite quickly it will reproduce itself. One of my goals for this year is to build a small apothecary of wild plants and garden herbs. They all have their own superpowers like stress and anxiety relief or anti-inflammatory and antimicrobial benefits. to organize my herbs. They all are important ingredients for my upcoming projects, so stay tuned as I will be infusing oils in one of my next episodes. I have been experimenting with homemade body care items and <laughs> these products have been a game changer for me. Comment. Have you ever experimented with creating your own body care items? I'm actually quite impressed how much calendula I have managed to pick and dry because I didn't have it like too much in my garden, but um, there's actually quite a lot of it and there's still um, 
new flowers blooming in my garden so I'm gonna definitely harvest those and dry uh, as well and also um, I have here a little bit too I think that these dried flowers look so beautiful I will be using these in my um, calendula infused oil uh, instead of using just the petals I will experiment with the whole flower I think it's just much easier to later in the process strain the uh, flowers rather than, rather than very very thin petals so yeah let's experiment Chamomile is definitely one of the most relaxing scents I have ever smelled, I guess. <laughs> um, actually, there was time when I didn't like chamomile smell at all. Now, whenever I open this uh, jar, oh my god, I feel immediately so relaxed. Um, I'm in love. P.S. I recently made a chamomile face oil and it's a product I will keep reproducing for myself. Unfortunately, this jar is quite empty, but I have done the best I, I possibly can do. Um, rookie mistake, I didn't sow enough uh, chamomile into my garden, although I had I think like two or three seed packs of chamomile, but yeah, it takes a lot more to get this jar full, but I'm, all, I'm very happy with this amount as well. And there's a big difference if the chamomile is uh, fresh or, or bought from, uh, I don't know, uh, like a store in a tea bag, which has a stayed there somewhere <laughs> uh, for a while and yeah there's a very big difference and that's why I'm, I'm I'm a little bit kind of sad or disappointed in myself that I I didn't have more seeds to plant into my garden but next year I'm I'm definitely gonna be smarter and I will planted everywhere okay next in line lavender lavender is new for me yes i'm familiar with its stress and anxiety relieving properties but i have never experimented with it more than that so i'm very excited to bring this plant into my kitchen i read that it works well in desserts and has a wonderful taste to meat I love gathering and drying rose petals. They make an excellent tea when mixed with peppermint leaves. And of course, before using any natural remedies, make sure you have identified them properly and you are not allergic to them. This year I discovered the art of making colorful salts, but it's not only about the colors. My favorite is basil salt, which adds a beautiful summery taste to different dishes. 
simply mix together basil and fine grain salt using a food processor and dry it in the oven at the lowest temperature for an hour or so. By the way, I even experimented with rose salt. Look at that color and the taste is divine. Another easy way to preserve summer tastes and smells is by making jam. Every summer I make a small batch of raw strawberry jam, which is a bit healthier option. I simply crush the berries, add sugar or any sweetener you prefer and freeze it. Perfect for pancakes during slow winter mornings, a true taste of summer. Small fingers will make a mess and slow you down. But instead of worrying about the mess or hurrying to the next task, I enjoy the moment just as it is. In some years we won't remember the messy kitchen, but we will remember the moment spent together making the most delicious jam. Thank you for watching. I hope this video inspired you to slow down and enjoy the sweetness of the season. Let me know which project was your favorite and share in the comments how you like to preserve the taste and smells of summer.